this is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with an oven that will not heat. We're going to be replacing the igniter. This is on a gas oven. So we turn off the power. So we have it unplugged, or we turned off the breaker, and we have the oven door open, pulling out the racks. It's best if you can remove the oven door to make this procedure easier. This oven door just didn't want to come off, but usually it's pretty easy to take them off. So I'm going to do it with the oven door in place. I got the racks removed. And I'll take a quarter inch driver and remove two quarter inch screws that are in the back. Sometimes these are held in by standard head uh, screws, which is a standard head screwdriver. These though were just a hex quarter inch, so I just pulled them out. And then you pull up on the back of this bottom plate and then lift it out at about 45 degrees. So I'm just grabbing these vents and then pulling up in the back. And then the front lip will slide out where it slide, slid into the frame. And I can get this bottom plate out. And then I have good access to the igniter. The screws that hold in the igniter tend to be somewhat corroded. So I always put a little drop of oil on the threads, ideally, before I try to remove them. They tend to be kind of rusted and they get brittle, so they can break easily. And I'd rather not break them, so I'm going to use a quarter inch driver. Actually, these might be seven eighths. Yes, these are seven eighths, so I'll pull these two out. And then I can remove the old igniter and put a new one in. So this oven had the symptom where it just wouldn't, wouldn't heat. And sometimes you get uh, igniters that are getting older and they still heat, but it takes a long time for it to heat up or to light. And a new igniter will fix this problem. So I'm gonna pull back on these wires. Sometimes you have to cut these wires. This one just has wire nuts that are connecting it. So I'm just gonna undo the old wire nuts. That means this has been replaced since it was put in by the factory. The factory, there won't be wire nuts. It'll just be a modular connector or you may have to cut the wires. A lot of times the igniter kits come with porcelain wire nuts that allow you to, to splice the old wires and then use the wire nuts to connect them. They're really pretty easy to do. So I usually use my wire strippers to remove about a quarter inch of wire from the uh, power coming from the oven and then the wires that come with the kit already are stripped at about a quarter inch and I'll put on the ceramic wire nut I'll twist it righty tighty and as tight as I can until it won't go any further and then I'll do the same on the other wire so you don't have to do these wires in any, any certain order and there's not a polarity issue so you can put either of the power wires from the oven to either of the wires on the igniter. You can't, you can't short circuit it or do it wrong unless it touches the metal. So you gotta make sure you do have the wire nut on there securely so there's no part of the wire that could touch the metal. I'm just putting on the other two wires together, one from the oven and one to the igniter. And I'll put on the ceramic wire nut and get that on really tight. If there is any oil left on the threads or anywhere around, try to dry it off and get rid of it because when it burns, it does make a bad smell. We're just pushing the wire now into the firewall, into the frame to get it out of there. You can always cut this wire shorter too if you'd like. You don't want a lot of this wire exposed because this part of the oven gets really hot. So you want to get the stuff behind the firewall. Some ovens have a round igniter like the GE ovens, but it's pretty much the same procedure. And most other type like Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Bosch, they all have the same flat type igniter. Then we just have to put the two little screws back in, tighten them up. Be careful not to over tighten these because these, again, are kind of brittle and they can snap pretty easily. Get that last.
last one in. And we want to turn it on now. We want to plug it in and then turn it on and see if everything's working as it should. You should hear like a little click up here at the controller or the clock. That's the relay clicking. And that's sending power down to the igniter. And then the igniter should start to glow. And within about 60 seconds, you should have ignition. If you hear gas flowing, but you don't have ignition right away, it could be that you want to try to adjust the igniter to be closer to the burner tube. Sometimes they call the burner tube of Venturi. So here it's glowing and a healthy igniter should glow to almost white hot within about 10 seconds. So it's glowing pretty bright. The older worn out ones will just stay kind of an orange color for a long period of time and it probably won't even let the gas flow in. So now we have ignition, we can see the flames. And that's all there really is to getting your oven working again. Probably take you 15 minutes, you'll be done. So we're going to turn it off and then we're just going to put it all back together. So we're going to take that heat shield, the bottom plate, push it in there and then set it in at about 45 degrees. So the front part, the part closest to you will go down, that lip will go down into the frame first and then you set the back end last. And you want to make sure you push it all down nice and flat. So I'm going to push the front lip in to the frame and then I'll set in the back get it nice and flat and then I'll just put those two screws in to hold the back plate down gravity is really enough to hold that plate down but it is good to to follow the reverse procedure of how you took it apart so putting the screws in does not hurt So once we have those two screws in, we'll just put the racks back in and we'll close it up, take it for one more test. Yeah, you could be, you could be a champion yoga expert. <laughs> oh yeah, because you get that compounded. Here we go. Yeah. Close the door. Okay. And we're just pushing these little parts back in because I was trying to remove the oven door earlier. That makes sense, yeah. That nice and closed. And I'll take it for one more test. So on the test it heated up to 450, so we know it's working great again. And that's all there is to it. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.